Today is my first official power rankings for the 2024 NFL season. We're only 41 days away from the start of the regular season on September the 5th. I can't wait. Football season is the best time of year, so we're going to do my official July power rankings. Um, and I'll probably do an updated one a couple days before the start of the season. And of course, we're going to be doing this all throughout the year. So let's get into my power rankings right now. Kicking off the list at number 10, I have the Cincinnati Bengals. So if you're one of like the 11 people that was listening to me last year, uh, you'll remember that I had the Bengals at number one going into last season. They were my Super Bowl pick. I'm nowhere near as confident in them going into the 2024 NFL season for a multitude of reasons. Number one being Joe Burrow's health concerns. That's a real thing now. He's played four seasons in the NFL. Two out of the four years, he ended the season with a gruesome injury. It happened last year. It happened his rookie year. Um, and another thing being the roster is not as good, it, especially when you compare it to their Super Bowl run. It, it's nowhere near as deep a team as it was back then. Obviously, you lost Joe Mixon this offseason. You lost Jesse Bates last offseason. He's gone on to become like one of the best safeties in the NFL. And he was always really good in Cincinnati, but I feel like he's even elevated more since he got to Atlanta. He's like arguably the best safety in the NFL now. Um, and then on top of that, you have disgruntled stars within this organization, like really important key uh, players seem like they don't want to be there. T. Higgins requested a trade not once but twice this offseason. Seems like this is probably his last year there. I don't know how committed he's going to be to this team. And Trey Hendrickson... Probably your best defensive player is also a guy that requested a trade. People probably forget that, but yeah, he did request a trade as well. So you got those two guys. I don't know how committed they are to this team. You got Burroughs injuries. So there's all this, all this swirling around. So why do I have them in the top 10? Well, like I said, Burrow has missed half the, the seasons, or excuse me, he's gotten injured in half the seasons he's played. What happened in those other two seasons when he didn't get injured Oh, they went to the Super Bowl one year, and the other year they went to the AFC Championship game. And that's exactly why I still have the Bengals in 10. Even though there are, I have my concerns with their roster, I don't know what's going on in terms of the locker room. I know when Joe Burrow is on the field fully healthy, he's without a doubt the second best quarterback in the NFL behind Patrick Mahomes. You have a generational level talent with Jamar Chase. That is arguably, I think outside of Mahomes and Kelsey, I think Burrow and Chase is the second best connection in the entire NFL. And even with chaos around them, those two are good enough to make you a playoff team. And we've seen them already reach a Super Bowl. So even though I have a lot of concerns, the high-end talent of the Bengals, I think is good enough to land them in the top 10. And I do think they're going to be a wild card team this year. And at number nine, I have the Los Angeles Rams. I think they were the most surprising team in 2023 outside of the Houston Texans, you know, because you go back to 2022, they had a dumpster fire season. They won like five or six games. It looked like their run was over. And then out of nowhere in 2023, they won like 11 games. They almost beat Detroit in that playoff game. And they were like one of the hottest teams in the NFL going into playoffs. And I really think that's a credit to Sean McVay and the culture that he's built up in L.A. where he gets the best out of his players. The GM has done a phenomenal job of drafting and finding these diamond-in-the-rough type players like Puka Nakua, like Kyron Williams, like Kobe Turner. Those three guys are all studs, you know, Pro Bowl-level players that he found in the later rounds that have all blossomed into, like, some of them. In Puka's case, and Kyron's case, are superstars. And I think Kobe Turner is already on his way to becoming a superstar. Just as a rookie, Kobe Turner had nine and a half sacks and led the team in sacks as a rookie. So you got those three guys. Stafford went upright, I think is easily like a top seven quarterback in the NFL. Still has the high-end talent and is just surrounded with so many playmakers on that Rams offense. Like you now have truly... Two legit number one receivers in Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua. They completely rebuilt their offensive line. They got my guy, Kevin Dotson, from the Steelers. <laughs> He's not my guy. I actually hated him when he was a Steeler. But somehow they turned him into a really productive player. They built up their O-line. Like we said, Kyron Williams was a touchdown machine last year. He's definitely a guy to watch for fantasy. Um, and you have McVay, who I now consider to be the second best coach in the NFL, second only to Andy Reid. 
Their defense is really impressive. Even though it's young, they got a ton of playmakers all over that defense. So as long as, you know, like we said about Burrow, and this kind of goes for all the teams, as long as their quarterback is healthy in Stafford, this is, I think, their their uh, basement would be like a 10-win team. They just have so much talent, and especially on the right side of the ball, offense, they are loaded, which is going to keep them in any game. Now coming in at number eight, I have the Green Bay Packers, and this all rests on Jordan Love. Can he recreate what he did in the back half of last year? I absolutely think he can. He has the talent, he has the athleticism, and he has good players around him. He has one of the best young receiver cores in the entire NFL with Watson and Dobbs and Wicks. And they already had a really good running back in Aaron Jones. I would say he was a top 10 running back, but they even upgraded that to Josh Jacobs, who's arguably a top three running back in the NFL. They invested in their offensive line in the draft. And defensively, you know, I'm not a Packers fan. I don't live in Green Bay, so I don't follow them as closely as, like, my team, obviously. But I heard a lot of chatter that they despised their defensive coordinator. And they got rid of him. So hopefully for their sake, their defense is better. They got they still have some really good players on that defense. And they also added uh, McKinney from the Giants in free agency. That's a really good pickup. Um, so if there are Packers fans listening, go ahead and let me know down in the comments what you feel about the new defensive coordinator. Do you think he's an upgrade over the guy you just had? Because I know a lot of Packers fans hated the, the D.C. last year. Um, but overall, extremely talented roster. You got a lot of young, good players. If Jordan Love plays like that, you're going to be in every single game you play. And Matt LaFleur, I think, is one of the most underrated coaches in the NFL. And at number seven, we have the Buffalo Bills. And they're simply on this list because of Josh Allen. Because when you look at the roster outside of him, this is the worst roster they've had since Josh Allen entered his prime. And it's not even really that close. I mean, they lost a lot of their veteran, high-end talent player guys. I mean, when you look at back to like the 2020 season, or the 2021 season, and the Bills weren't able to get it done back then with a loaded roster, how am I supposed to believe they're going to get it done now, now that all those guys are gone? They gutted their secondary guys like Trey White and Hyde are gone. Obviously, the biggest one gone, Stephon Diggs, was really Josh Allen's only dependable weapon since he's entered his prime. And now when you look at his receiver core, it's kind of a lot of question marks. Like, I like Khalil Shakir. I like Curtis Samuel. I like Keon Coleman. But none of those guys are proven number one options in the NFL. Maybe one of them will step up. Um, but this roster is a lot more thin than it used to be. It doesn't have the explosive high-end talent that it once had. So you, you might ask, we well, you're saying all these negative things. Why do you have them in your top ten? Josh Allen, he's that good. You know, you look back to last year, they were 6-6, six and six, and it looked like we even made a video about it. It was like, are the Bills done? And they went on to go undefeated for the rest of the regular season. They won out, they won their division, and it was all on the back of Josh Allen, who I think actually had a strong MVP case. Those people that want to cry about the interceptions and say he's overrated, I think that's all bullshit. Um, the stuff he does, you know, I, I don't think... I don't think there's a player in the NFL that carries their offense more than Josh Allen does because you look back to previous years, not last year, but the years before that, Josh Allen was the leading rusher on the Buffalo Bills, and that's on top of all the stuff he does in the passing game. He's just, you know, Cam Newton with Brett Favre's arm. I mean, he is a one-of-one one guy, and that is why the Bills, excuse me, that's why the Bills are still at number seven despite losing all those key guys. Number six, we have the Houston Texans. So we're going from Diggs' old team to his new team now. And I think the one-year turnaround that the Texans had last year will be studied for generations. You know, you go from 2022, the dumpster fire that they were, a two-win team, just getting over the controversy with all the Deshaun stuff. And then to go to 2023, where they're a 10-win team, they win their division. They win a playoff game against the NFL's number one pass defense in the Cleveland Browns. And... The two guys they brought in, D'Amico Ryans, I think is already arguably a top 10 head coach in the NFL. He's incredible. And then C.J. Stroud had the best rookie season in the history of the NFL and is already widely considered to be you know, like a top seven quarterback in the NFL already. And then you look at the roster outside of C.J., look at the weapons. Stephon Diggs has never played on a team like this where he's just going to be wide open because you can't double Stephon Diggs ever because they have like legit legitimately three number one options on this team with Diggs, Dell, and Nico Collins. And they upgraded their running back, Joe Mixon. 
He was a production machine in Cincinnati, the model of consistency in terms of his play ever since he arrived in the NFL. And that isn't even to mention the defense. They had Will Anderson Jr. last year, defensive rookie of the year, and you pair him with Daniil Hunter from the Vikings, who had 16 and a half sacks last year. You pair those two together, Derek Stingley Jr. is turning into a monster in the secondary, and you have D'Amico leading that defense. And on top of that, I really like their offensive coordinator as well. I thought he was going to get uh, a head coaching job, but it turns out he's staying there. So incredible staff, incredible roster, generational quarterback. This team, the sky's the limit. Like I could see legitimately the Texans raising the Lombardi next year. That's how talented this team is. And I think you could argue they could even be, they should be even higher than number six. Coming in at number five, I have the Philadelphia Eagles. So up front, I do want to list off a couple of issues I have with the Eagles, and then I'll go on and list my pros and tell you why I do have them as high. Uh, my biggest concern for the Eagles going into this year is the fact that Sirianni is still there. Um, I think he should have been fired. I don't think he knows what the fuck he's doing. I don't know what he provides to this Eagles team outside of being an, a glorified cheerleader. Um, and if the thi if things go south for the Eagles quickly to start off the year, there's a chance Sirianni could become public enemy number one on this channel, just like uh, Brandon Staley was last year. If that happens, Sirianni will be blasted on this channel. Um, so he's incompetent. So it really comes down to the coordinators. They had awesome coordinators in 22. That's why they went to the Super Bowl with Steichen and Gannon. In 23, they had coordinators that didn't know what the fuck they were doing. So that's why as the year went on, you know, they were able to mask it early on. But as the year went on, they were really predictable and got exposed. And I think they did a really good job of addressing their coordinators now with Kellen Moore and Vic Fangio, two rock-solid coordinators. So that's good. And then my other concern would be you had retirements of two, like, legends uh, with Jason Kelsey, of course, that's a massive loss, not only from a locker room presence, but also on the field, still one of the best players in the NFL. Um, and then Fletcher Cox, maybe not as dominant in terms of his play as he once was, but as a locker room guy, cannot be replaced as a leader. Um, so that sucks to lose those guys. But in terms of the talent on this team, the offseason they just had, this is a Pro Bowl team. This is a literally a Pro Bowl roster. Looking at just offense Jalen Hurts, I know a lot of people are still down on him, but the guy has persevered everywhere he's gone. I still think he's a stud. People seem to forget just like two years ago, he outdueled Patrick Mahomes in a Super Bowl. He got two legit Pro Bowl level guys in A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith on the perimeter. You got Dallas Goddard, great tight end. And oh yeah, they added this guy named Saquon Barkley, who was still a production machine on the shitty New York Giants last year. He, I mean, Saquon has never been in this type of offense ever. Like, you can't stack the box to go get Saquon. There's a chance he has his best year, even with his, like, user rate going down. Just that's, that's just how loaded this offense is. And then defensively, what was my number one critique of the Eagles in terms of their roster last year? Secondary. And what did they do? They heavily, aggressively addressed that in the draft by adding Quinion Mitchell, who I really wanted to be a stealer. I think he's the best corner in this draft. They got him. And they doubled down on it in the second round, getting Cooper DeGene. So you got two stud rookies to patch up your number one glaring issue. You solved your coordinator mess, and you have a Pro Bowl roster. I think this is the makings of uh, an incredible team and is going to threaten to be the one seed in the NFC. And at number four, I have the Detroit Lions, one of the few teams that I'm legitimately considering putting a sizable bet on to win the Super Bowl. Because I just love their roster. We're going to go unit by unit. Quarterback, you got a stud in Jared Goff, top 10 guy in the NFL, one of the most productive quarterbacks. Offensive line, top three in the league. Studs and pro bowlers all throughout that line. The running back tandem is the best in the NFL with Montgomery and Gibbs. Receiver core, you got Amonra St. Brown, arguably a top five guy in the league at that position. And Jamison Williams, who... People kind of forget missed the first six games last year with suspension. I think he's poised for a big breakout year. And defensively, you got Aiden Hutchinson, one of the most dominant pass rushers last year. The linebacker core is on the rise. And the secondary was probably their – no, not probably. It was their biggest issue last year. But similar to the Eagles, they aggressively addressed that in the offseason. With the draft, they drafted Terry and Arnold. I think you can argue will be the best corner in this class. I'd go Quinion. I really like Quinion Mitchell. But Terry and Arnold, you can make a legit argument for. He was a freak at Alabama. 
He paired him with his former teammate, Brian Branch, who is you know, another Bama guy who was a stud last year as a rookie. And then you also grab Carlton Davis from Tampa, really good starting corner. Um, so I think you addressed your concerns in the secondary. And every unit is loaded, and I also love their coaching staff. We've talked about Dan Campbell a lot. Um, from an X's and O's standpoint, don't know quite yet what he is, but from a motivational standpoint, I think he's second to none in the NFL. His guys will run through a fucking brick wall for him. And on top of that, I think you can really make the case they have the best offensive coordinator who's not, you know, like who's not a head coach, you know, because there are coaches like McVay and Shanahan, coaches that do call the plays. But in terms of OCs that are calling the plays, I think Ben Johnson is the best in the NFL. I thought for sure he was going to be a head coach going into this year, but they were able to keep him. So fantastic roster, fantastic coaching staff. I think the sky's the limit for Detroit. Number three, I have the San Francisco 49ers, last year's NFC champions. And you take everything I just said about Detroit and multiply that by like two or three because they're just the more veteran and better version of the Detroit Lions in terms of having a stacked roster unit by unit, playmakers everywhere. And I know that they've had some off-the-field kind of issues this year, particularly with the Brandon Ayuk mess, but I've been saying this from the start, and even whenever he requested a trade, I've been saying this. I think no matter what, Brandon Ayuk is going to play the 2024 season in a Niners jersey. So I'm just assuming he's going to be back. You have literally the Avengers on offense. Christian McCaffrey... Hands down, best running back in the NFL. One of the most dynamic, unique talents we've ever seen in football um, for his ability to be an elite pass catcher and the best running back. You got Debo. Again, one of the most unique players we've ever seen. He's the yards after catch king. Brandon Ayuk, stud player. Like I said, I think he's going to be back. Um, And Brock Purdy. You know, I know there's a lot of takes on Brock Purdy, whether you're on one side of the spectrum or not on Brock Purdy. You cannot deny the production he brings. He was in the MVP conversation last year, and I he's just the perfect Shanahan quarterback. You know, he doesn't go off script. He doesn't try to play hero ball. He does exactly what the team needs, and you can say all you want about him over being uh, overrated or being a system guy. I don't care. The guy wins games, and that's all that matters, and the defense, I know it's getting older. But it's still really good. You still have a lot of high-end guys with Bosa and Warner, Fuunga, Ward. I I still really like this defense and the team overall. And I do think that their window is closing rapidly. This might be their last year of their Super Bowl window because Trent Williams, he ain't getting younger. Christian McCaffrey and Debo, they play very physical styles of football. They're not going to last forever. This is probably your last year with Brandon Ayuk on the team. You're going to have to pay Brock Purdy eventually, so I'm sure we'll be talking about the Niners a lot this year. I feel like this is really their last year of their Super Bowl window, so they kind of have to get it done this year, and I, I think they certainly do have a shot. They have an incredible roster and a top three head coach in Shanahan. Number two, we have the Baltimore Ravens. Look at this picture. Like, If this does not breathe fear into you as an opposing team, I don't know what will. This might be... One of the most, uh, I can't even really put into words this duo, how ridiculous this duo can be. Because Derrick Henry, even last year on a terrible Titans team, was an elite player with over 1,200 yards, still had like over 10 touchdowns on a god-awful Titans team with a terrible O-line. Now you put him on... Arguably, you know, not. I'm not saying the Ravens do have the best roster in the NFL, but arguably the best roster in the league. You put them on a team with that much talent, Derrick Henry is going to fucking dominate with the Baltimore Ravens. He is going to be a complete wrecking ball. And Lamar Jackson has never, like, just think of how many different schemes they can draw up with the dual threat ability of Lamar and the wrecking ball force of Derrick Henry. That's just two players on their team. Think about all the other great players they have on this team. Zay Flowers, he's blossoming into a stud. Mark Andrews, easily top five tight end. Really good offensive line. And the defense, there was a point last year where their defense was historically great. They didn't finish as good as they started off, but that defense is still incredible. You know, Matabuke got paid for good reason. He had like 13 sacks last year. Roquan Smith, I think in a couple years, will be the best linebacker in the NFL. I'm still... Reserving that honor for Fred Warner, but Roquan, definitely in the conversation. They have a really good secondary with Hamilton and uh, uh, with Marlon Humphrey as well. They play a very smash-mouth physical style of football. And I always point back to the Christmas game last year against the 49ers where 
The 49ers' whole MO is their physical style of play. They beat you up and just grind you down. And the Ravens went into San Francisco, and they did that to the Niners. They out physical the Niners. And I just like have never seen the Niners get manhandled like that. And the Ravens did that all at the hands of their phenomenal roster. And, of course, the MVP, Lamar Jackson. Say what you will about the guy. I think he's a stud. Obviously, in Pittsburgh, I hear all the nonsense about Lamar. Oh, he's just a running back. I think last year he proved he's an elite thrower. This is the most complete uh, skill set. You know, this is the most complete we've ever seen Lamar in terms of his skill set. I mean, he's the best runner, you know, running quarterback of all time already, winning two MVPs. But now I think he's also an elite passer and has to be in the, the conversation for top three, top five quarterback in the league right now. And I really think this is the Ravens Super Bowl window is this year. I would pick them to win it. I do have some reserves we'll talk about later on in the year. But of course, you know, they just don't live up to their playoff hype. That does worry me. But just from a roster perspective, the sky's the limit for the Ravens right now. And at number one, what a surprise to everybody. We have the back-to-back -back Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, what can I say about them that hasn't already been said? I've doubted this team time after time. You know, going into last year, I picked against them. Going into this this year, I picked against them. I can't do it again. You know, even though I still have my roster concerns, it doesn't fucking matter because I've worried about the receiver core. I've worried about, you know, their defense being inexperienced and really young. It doesn't matter because they have the best player on the planet, Patrick Mahomes. The gap between him and the second best player in the league right now is like the size of the Grand Canyon. This guy is just like an alien. Like I've never seen anything like it before in my life. Um, and Andy Reid right now, even though I've tried to, I've really, really tried to like poke holes in Andy Reid and I've always kind of pushed back against him, but I can't like deny it anymore. Like it's kind of like the Jokic thing. I always pushed back on Jokic being the best, but at this point in time with Reed, like I'd be naive to to not say Reed is the best, you know. Like it, it's just insane what they've been able to do. Um, and I, like I said, I don't think anyone is surprised by this. Even though I have my worries with their roster, I think there are better overall rosters in the NFL NFL right now. Just can't doubt the Chiefs, you know. I, I've done it before, and they've made me look like a dumbass, so I can't do it again. So I'm putting them where they belong at number one. So that's been my July power rankings. Let me know your list down in the comments and definitely stay tuned for this all throughout the year. Please like and subscribe.